Brought to you by StationHouseCoffee.com and Amazon. What you manifest in your mind, you can bring to reality. Fight Club, a movie that came out in 1999. I was working at a movie theater as a projectionist. I was 18 years old. And then, bam, Fight Club came out and was my favorite movie. I mean, all through my 20s, it is a movie that I think really communicated with my generation, people of my age. I think anybody, even today, you could probably watch it and still connect to it, even though the movie and the book uh, written by Chuck Palahniuk, uh, you know, is, isn't is really... Like, when you're at a certain age, you, like, fantasize that kind of lifestyle. But then as you get older, you realize uh, the the misfortunes of trying to hit rock bottom intentionally. Um, but, yeah, I love this movie. It's, it's, I mean, even from, you know, it starts, you have this this solid, you know, 90s. It is, like, the, the era of electronic, grungy electronic music. I mean, it's so much of the 90s. The Matrix had a lot of this, too. Uh, Beck was experimenting a lot with the electronic stuff. Fatboy Slim, Moby. Like, it was just of the culture, um, electronic music. And, like, Nine Inch Nails, stuff like that. Trent Reznor. Like, it had that kind of grimy, yet uh, very of the 90s uh, vibe to it. Um, and then the long, you know, CG shot of... You know, being inside Edward Norton's body and then coming out through his nose, up through the shaft of the gun. Just like a classic opening to a movie. Just so much of this movie, because I've watched it hundreds of thousands of times. It's still one of my favorite movies, even though the perspective that I watch it from is slightly different. Um, especially since this movie came out. I mean, one of the parts of this is that, you know, the guys in their 20s, are fr- have like this frustration and this anger but they don't have anywhere to put it because they they've never had any great struggles like they never had to deal with a depression or a war uh, which thankfully to the uh, brilliant leadership of the conservative party in this country uh, with Bush we got a recession and a great war basically and then now with Trump uh doing everything he can not to help out during the corona virus but that being said in 1999 there was no 911 yet there was no i mean there was desert storm which was you know the first attempt bush seniors attempt at invading iraq uh but you know the ongoing war hadn't been there so and there is just that age range from teen it's like the evolution of teen angst is like this kind of, especially for me, this kind of rage, this kind of uh, nihilistic, anarchistic kind of rage um, that, you know, is misplaced at times due to ignorance. But, it, it like, there is something powerful in that because the, the ignorance of just the complexity of life, but also just the ignorance to do things that you wouldn't, I mean... It's so hard to follow a dream, follow a path, which this movie also inspires that during the human sacrifice. Raymond K. Hessel, I believe. Maybe not, but I know his name was Raymond. Um, it's like, you know, we're, we're Tyler Durden and uh, Edward Norton uh, or, you know, his whatever uh, narrator, I guess he's called, uh, during the sacrifice. Like where it's like, well, if you're going to die tomorrow if i was going to kill you right now what would you rather do would you rather sacrifice your life and aspects of your life to pursue your dream or do you want to just die which in reality you know whatever but cosmically nothing's guaranteed tomorrow's not guaranteed you know so that kind of message for me in my 20s has really been a, a guiding post how I live my life. And there's been other movies with similar kind of messages and things that I've taken from them. But this one for sure has that thing. Um, but I rewatched it last night and it's, it, you know, I've watched it so many times, but I rewatched it knowing I was going to talk about it and just kind of seeing it from the perspective of, you know, me now almost 40 versus me then not even 20 yet. 
um, and just kind of the the growing and watching it as a 20 year old. And uh, it's I mean, it's got all of the, the re- like it's a movie that encapsulates what my 20s were like, you know, f- finding bonds with peers. I didn't really necessarily get into a lot of fights, but there were times where I told my friends to hit me in the face. Uh, and there were times I hit myself in the face. Uh, which I don't recommend either of those, but sometimes you don't always handle depression in the healthiest of ways. Uh, but yeah, it's definitely like, so other than that, other than it, me looking at basically watching this movie is like me looking at aspects of myself um, from those years. Uh, but there's a lot of things called, I mean, even still, there's a line where Tyler Durden and the narrator are talking in the bathroom and it's like, uh, Uh, he's telling him about his dad and how he like, you know, would set up quote unquote franchises and all that shit. And, uh, the last line is like, you know, we're a generation of men raised by women. And I'm wondering if another woman's exactly what we need, which is like, technically, you know, I was definitely single for a lot of my twenties. I mean, I'm not a lot of it. Like, I don't, I don't know if there was somebody I was into, then I pursued it. If it worked out, then I was usually in a relationship. But I didn't need to be in a relationship. And it's kind of because I was, you know, I'm an only child raised by a single mom. No male influences in my life, which this movie is kind of like explores that as well. Um, you know, not kind of growing up with a fir- certain amount of testosterone around can kind of leave you, especially in your 20s, man. Like I remember... Those were the days where I, I like the only time in my life I remember really wishing I had a dad in my life uh, or a male kind of figure. Later, later on, I collected some of them, like Joe Rogan in a lot of ways is, uh, you know, kind of been a surrogate dad, father figure. Uh, uh, um, Robin Williams also. Uh, so I've kind of gravitated to different people that I kind of look up to and uh, help me become more of a of a a grown uh, male but uh yeah and this i mean fight club the it's a crazy movie too i mean it's this a character that's like schizophrenic he's imagining this guy where he's doing these fights and all this stuff and it's just i i love this movie so much um the turn re-watching it you know knowing that they're the same person is amazing um you know all of the acting is amazing the cinematography is amazing like everything works everything fits and works the only thing kind of dated is the 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 soundtrack you know but other than that at least there weren't any rave scenes i don't think there was a rave scene which was nice because there was a lot of rave scenes uh to accompany a lot of the the electronic music soundtracks in the 90s um matrix blade uh but yeah but amazing quotes i was a huge fan i became a huge fan of chuck palahniuk i can't read fight club the book because i've watched the movie so many times and it's there's been some changes uh but all of his other books are amazing like if you if you are a fan of fight club it, reading the rest of his books are no brainers i mean it's all like these really out there kind of fringe of society characters that have the most ridiculous uh kind of existences like it, he really explores how there are an infinite amount of ways to experience this reality that we're all uh in right now and uh it's crazy some amazing characters so i would definitely recommend chuck palinick books um and then fight club rewatch it's on hbo streaming rewatch it if you haven't it's still great edward norton's performance brad pitt i mean brad pitt one of the sexiest characters ever of tyler durden uh marla singer what's her face uh meatloaf of course bitch tits um but uh let's see what's marla singers uh helena bottom carter carter had a huge crush on her after this movie uh which probably led me to some bad choices in uh girlfriends at some point i'm sure uh but yeah check out fight club if you haven't one of my most favorite movies uh it's only after we've lost everything that we're free to do anything Without pain, without sacrifice, we would have nothing. Fuck it. Let the chips fall where they may. I love that movie so much. So many quotes. So much. It's, so, it's such a big part of my life. Go check it out.
Be sure to check out the official coffee sponsor of the Ray Taylor Show over at StationHouseCoffee.com. Follow Station House Coffee on Instagram for small batch, single origin, premium coffee shipped direct to you from Vermont. Support small business and order some coffee now over at StationHouseCoffee.com. And follow Station House Coffee on Instagram. Also, Amazon. Use my link, inspireddisorder.com slash Amazon, to order all of the supplies you need delivered directly to you with a little percentage going to me because I sent you. So go to inspireddisorder.com slash Amazon, shop as normal, and a small percentage of whatever you spend comes to help support me, support this show, helps keep me rolling, helps keep me rocking. So once again, order all your supplies, inspireddisorder.com slash Amazon and order now new episodes of the ray taylor show come out every single day subscribe on igtv youtube and everywhere else podcasts are found go buy my artwork over at inspireddisorder.com and save 25 percent when you use coupon code rts follow this show on instagram at ray taylor show have a wonderful day everybody peace out